A lot of folks ask us about biotech, about how I pick these stocks. And I'm not going to go into the whole, dive into the whole thing today, but here's what I will say. I'm not a scientist, obviously. I didn't go to medical school or anything like that. And I take an approach, what I call blunt force logic. I try to apply serious logic to a lot of the biotech investments. For example, clinical trials have three phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. And in phase one, you're testing for safety, first and foremost, in a very small population. In phase two, you're testing for safety plus efficacy. And you want to make sure the thing works. And then phase three, you're testing for efficacy, of course, substantial efficacy, and you're testing different dosing regimens among different subpopulations. One of the things that I do is I'm trying to avoid big, crazy risk. And that's the way I'm programmed. I hate risky, crazy things. So one of the things I do to avoid risk in biotech or to think about biotech investing, and it might help you a little bit, is I understand that for 100 drugs that start phase one trials, only 20 make it to phase three, right? So what I'm looking for here is I want to avoid basically phase one investments because those are the highest risk. Once in a while, I'll recommend them if I understand the team running the company and they have a terrific platform. But for the most part, successful biotech investing for me and my own experience is like avoiding the hype that comes around phase one. I don't want to be in early phase two. My sweet spot here is late phase two, early phase three. And by late phase two, what I mean is I want to see results already that have been posted. And I like trials that are well designed. So basically by avoiding those one and a half, phase one and a half, you get rid of most of the risk in my view. Now, of course, phase three is a whole other thing and you got to see what the deal is there. So what I'm looking for are companies that are in late phase two, early phase three of their uh, drug clinical trial cycle. And what I really like is when one of those companies is attacking a big market that a big pharma giant uh, controls, something like a company that, tr that treats, let's say, lymphoma, and right now you have Pfizer or you have a Glaxo or you have a Bristol-Myers that has a dominant, powerful franchise in, let's say, lymphoma or leukemia. Or, and by the way, oncology cancers happens to be my sweet spot. It's the area that I think I've become more comfortable in. But I like these late phase three trials, phase two, phase three trials, where this small biotech is invented a drug or working on a drug that attacks a major franchise, let's say by Glaxo. Uh, Pfizer, Bristol Myers, whomever. And basically what happens is if those drugs, if that drug makes it across the finish line and you're Pfizer, you say, gosh, we're making $2 billion a year with this leukemia drug. But this other drug from this tiny little biotech, it's a better drug with a better safety profile. So we, gosh, they're going to take us, they take our business. So to protect our $2 billion franchise, we got to buy this tiny biotech. Or if we don't buy this tiny biotech that has a better drug than the current one we have on the market that we're making $2 billion a year with, somebody else is going to buy it and muscle themselves and their company into our turf and really attack our leukemia market, let's say, for example. So again, when it comes to biotech investing, what I'm looking for and the final ingredient really is a strong strategic partner. Because I'm not a scientist, what I like to do is find these companies that are, again, these small biotechs with a drug that attacks a very big market with a big established uh, market that, that a big pharma company selling into that has late phase two, phase three, big market, late phase two, phase three. And the last ingredient is a strategic partner that has invested in this company. Because what I'm doing is I'm trusting their scientists to actually go in there and say, this is a good drug. This has a lot of potential. So I lean on that big strategic partner and their scientists to go over there and tell me if the science is real, so to speak. <clears throat> so that's my secret. Avoid phase one and half of phase two. Focus on late phase two, early phase three. Biotechs, that's our sweet spot. Oncology is my specialty. Focus on oncology companies, small biotechs that are really attacking a very large market that an established big pharma giant already serves. And three, a strategic partner, a big validating strategic partner that's invested money, put their money where their mouth is, that has sent their scientists over there and has really taken an up-close look. Because again, I'm not a doctor or scientist, so I can't, I can't go there and look at the molecules of this and say this has a better inhibitor than the other one. So that is the three-step system I use, loosely speaking here.
to look at biotech stocks. And that's what's given us the success that we've had at Biotech Insider. I know it's not the fanciest system in the world. I've been using the system for years and it, it obviously works if you check our track record. Thank you. Have a great day.